Uh-oh. It's a different, it's meant to be a different plan. <laughs> Definitely. They must have swapped it out. Six hour flight, really poor, really rubbish. Welcome to Dubai. Dubai. We're outside Terminal 3 at Dubai Airport, but we're not flying the airline that usually flies from this terminal. We're gonna fly. Fly Dubai. I'm in economy today, which means Liam is in business. Get in. We're on the 737 Max. It's a really cool business class product. So I'm kind of jealous of that. And you might get a sprinkling of Emirates magic too. I think we should head off because I'm gonna have to queue. Let's do it. Well, another day, another sweaty brow in the Middle East. We're outside Terminal 3 here, which is a bit strange. Fly Dubai flights usually go from Terminal 2, uh, but this is really the home of Emirates. So I'm actually going to use the Emirates check-in area today to get the tickets for my flight. What I don't know is if that means I'm also going to be allowed into the Emirates Business Class Lounge. Fingers crossed, let's go and see. Do I wish I was flying Emirates First Class right now? Sure. Am I flying to Warsaw and Fly Dubai? Yep. <laughs> Twenty-five minutes in now, and I'm at the front line of the queue, snaking around. Twenty-five minutes is quite a long time to be standing around, and there's still a bit of a way to go. I am seeing the Fly Dubai logo for the first time, though, so at least I know I'm in the right place. Hiya, how are you doing? I'm flying to Warsaw. Well, thank you very much. Bye. Okay, excellent. So I've just checked my bag in and found out that my ticket does come with access to the Emirates Business Class Lounge today, even though I'm flying with Fly Dubai. 45 minutes deep into this queue, waiting now for this sign to flush up and we're going to 204, we're on. Hope I'm in the right place or this is gonna be full disaster. Hi. Uh, Warsaw. Always the way, isn't it? I've been there for 45 minutes. I mean, the whole thing took nearly an hour. And now, look at it, bloody empty. Not a person here. Oh well, better go find myself a coffee. So the first thing to know about this lounge is that it is absolutely enormous. I think in terms of square footage, it might be up there with the biggest lounge I've ever been in. So the first thing to know about this lounge is that it is absolutely enormous. Fronts on my way, there's so much seating. I can't imagine this ever being full, but it's obviously been built for a reason. Oh, wow, well, that will be nice, yeah. My gate is B2, so I'm just following those signs. But what I can see is a knife and fork sign, which I think means food, and I am starving. Can I do the corn and jalapeno fritter, please? A flat white, please. Yeah. Right behind me, I can see the end of the business class lounge, which is huge right here. Uh, but who needs business class lounge when you've got epic looking coffee in a very chilled and quiet surrounding? Fingers crossed it's going to be good. That is potentially the best coffee I've ever drank in an airport. Very good. Jalapeno fritter. Tiny bit stodgy looks better than it is, but still impressive. Thank you very much. Cheers. 
I am currently in the champagne wing of the lounge and again, you know, I've been here for about an hour and a half at this point and I'm still discovering new areas. I've been brought some little canapes, um, I've got some yellow fish um, and some chicken teriyaki as well. I'm, I'm pretty blown away at this point, you know, given this is the business class lounge, I can't imagine what the first class lounge would be like. I also need to remember that I am flying with Fly Dubai today, not Emirates, um, although Emirates have shown me a very good time so far, but I'm hoping the onboard experience will be equally excellent. So Fly Dubai here operate a gate where you go through the gate and then you wait in another like lounge area which is here where I think we're going to wait for boarding to start. So it's a remote gate today which means we're going to have to get a little shuttle to the actual plane and as you can see there is a pretty big queue in front of me. I'm not sure whether I have a separate shuttle because I'm business class but we'll have to wait and see but yeah looking like a bit of a wait right now, no sign of Nikki either. So I was sitting right by the gate and they just called all rows 116, it wasn't sort of business class first. Got a couple of people in front of me, this was all very relaxed. I think the experience is getting more and more chilled as we go along, which is about to be ruined by a great big bus. Wah, wah. The 737 MAX 8 that we should have been on, what a tease. I'm devastated. This is rubbish. So welcome on board this Fly Dubai plane, which is not the 737 MAX. It's actually a 737-800 aircraft swap. Um, I'm sure Liam's going to be very disappointed because the product he thought he was getting is, uh, is not the same and it's much better on the newer plane. But for me, I might have got something a little bit better, a little bit more modern, but it's still this tight economy seat. They did look comfier on the Max and I'm disappointed that I'm not on that aircraft. But this is what can happen when you fly an airline that has multiple different products. Um, so let's have a look at the seat. Um, it's a pretty hard and basic seat right here. Um, I've got one armrest that doesn't move on this side and a thicker armrest here which contains a tray table. The tray table folds out like this. Um, it's relatively sturdy. It's pretty standard for what you'd expect on this kind of aircraft. There is some seat recline, not very much, probably a couple of inches. Um, and then in front of me, the leg room is actually rather good because I've managed to snag the front row. So plenty of room for my legs here, um, plenty of room to move around. In terms of storage, there is this area here where I'm keeping my little bag. This is kind of like a saggy, it looks kind of old here. And one thing I would say is the fuselage comes down here, stopping you moving your legs. So that takes out a bit of the comfort aspect of being in this seat. And the seat does feel rather narrow. Right in front there is this screen, which doesn't seem to be working yet. It'd be interesting to see if this turns on at some point during the flight. So the in-flight entertainment screen, maybe it's going to work, maybe it's going to not. It's got some very old looking credit card swiping system and it all looks a bit crusty. Um, there is a USB charging port on there. I'm not sure if that's going to work either because it all kind of looks a bit off and old. Other than that, those are the features on this seat. Disaster has struck. You might notice that the seat I'm in doesn't look particularly business-like and that is because the plane we were meant to be flying on, a 737 MAX, was swapped out at the last minute and we are now on a 737-800. And unfortunately that has made all the difference. So while I was expecting a big throne seat, I now have a seat buddy in this uh, full cabin in rows of two by two and already it just feels very premium economy rather than anything close to business. You know I had it very good in the Emirates business lounge earlier but I think that is going to be the most business part of my experience today. I'll give you a tour of the seat while I'm here you know I'll still try and enjoy the experience so we've got this uh, headrest next to me that folds in like so and that feels pretty sturdy. Um, no real complaints there. The seat itself is 
very wide, which is nice. You know, I've got room to shift about in. However, the actual material is quite firm. It doesn't feel particularly soft and, you know, a long way off the majority of business class seats out there, in my opinion. In front of me, I do have a lot of leg room, to be fair, so I can, you know, stretch out a bit. However, this definitely isn't a fully flat seat and that's another thing that I was expecting today. I have a little seat pouch in front of me with a little divider to separate it. But again, storage is fairly limited to that and the overhead locker. I do also have a little side panel here that has my headphones in and a bottle of water. I think this seat is made out of concrete. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. The one thing I'll say this has got going for it is this. Actual air vents. Good job on that. Everything else, not sure. Okay, amenities. There are none. Not a pillow, not a blanket, nothing. Six hour flight, really poor, really rubbish. In terms of amenities, I'm afraid there's really not much to speak of. I have this pillow behind me. That I'm using on my seat to make it a bit softer. In this side pocket down here, I have some in-flight headphones, which are at least, you know, over ear, um, over ear headphones, Fly Dubai branded. I'll give those a uh, test in a bit. And then I also have a um, Fly Dubai provided bottle of water that was in my side pocket. So there you go. Nothing says business class like a pillow, some headphones and a bottle of water. So out in front of me, you have the IFE screen, which by itself isn't a bad size. You can see my hand in comparison to it there. But the issue is by the time you sat all the way back in your seat, it actually becomes pretty small. And again, it's far smaller than the number of business class cabins that I've seen with IFE. So it's another thumbs down, unfortunately. It's not the most responsive in the world, but it's got a decent selection of movies. And underneath it, you can see there is the headphone jack along with a USB um, socket if you want to plug something else in. Okay, so I've now been brought a blanket as well. So I think it's time to see if we can try and turn this seat into a bed. I don't think it's going to be anything special, but let's give it a go. Okay, so, you know, that's pretty decent recline. It's much better than a usual economy seat. But again, we're not in economy. We're not in premium economy. We're in business class. And it's a bit disappointing that I'm still at quite a rigid angle here. Instead of having my feet flat on the floor, I can click another button to the right of me here. And that makes a little ledge come out under my seat. And I can push that down into a little footrest. Adds a little bit of extra comfort, I guess. Let's see. Okay, so lying down like that, I'm gonna get my pillow and put it behind me. Let's get my blanket on so I get the full experience. Okay, so my seat is now fully reclined. I've got my pillow here and I've got my nice big blanket on. Is this good enough for a business class product? I'm gonna say no. You know, this is a world away from some of the business class life lap beds you can have. And, you know, I just wish I could have seen Fly Dubai's actual offering on their 7378 Max to, to see if they could actually offer a strong business class product. <laughs> Okay, this is a good sign. I wasn't sure if there's going to be any food available, but there is a food cart here. So the options were chicken with rice or vegetable macaroni, neither of which sounds massively appetizing, but um, let's see what they look like. Thank you. Cheeky bowl, cheeky package, fly to buy box. Let's see what we've got. So we have here the non-veg meal, a chicken casserole, which looks kind of tiny, but let, let's see what's inside. And then this plastic Fly Dubai box, which has inside one of those small, very hard airline bread rolls, a laughing cow piece of cheese, Jacob's crackers, a little pot of water, and some plastic cutlery. Who says you can't have a nice meal in economy? Pepper, this should make it nice. Give it some nice flavoring. Here we go, the moment of truth. Is this casserole gonna be all right? You know what, it doesn't look the best, but I must say it's relatively tasty for what it is. It's a little bit small. I actually would have loved to have seen or tried the, um, the mac vegetable macaroni, but this could have been far, far worse. Grilled rock solid airline bread rollers. 
You don't find these kind of bread rolls in real life, only on a plane. They're like at the hardest things of all time. I have a bit of like a sick obsession with them. Dipped into this casserole sauce. My life is quite glamorous, isn't it? Muffin cow sandwich, yes please. Unbelievable, best bit of the meal. I would actually eat 20 of these. This flight is really starting to look up. So I've just had my dinner brought out and it actually looks pretty excellent to be fair. And we've got proper metal cutlery that we always like to see. Um, you know, proper chinaware. It all looks, it looks pretty good. So let's, uh, let's give it a try and see how it fares. So for my main course, I had a choice between the grilled fish steak, chicken risotto, or the pumpkin pasta bake, and I opted for the grilled fish steak on this occasion. It was actually really tasty and succulent. It was paired with a nice tomato sauce, along with some potatoes and spinach, and it definitely felt like a business class meal. For dessert, I was given an American-style apple crumble with honey-infused cream, and this was actually absolutely delicious. The perfect mixture of crunchy and moist. It was really, really good. So there's an element of the meal you get free, but there's also things to buy. So I treated myself to a Corona, very appropriate in these times. Um, some honey barbecue chips and cocktail mix of nuts. And these three things cost me 55 dirham, which is probably about 11 or 12 pounds. And hopefully the Corona is going to make me feel a little bit more relaxed. So I've just been testing out the provided headphones by Flydevi and they were actually excellent. They were completely noise cancelling, quite comfy over ear. And it's another case of, you know, there were plenty of things about this experience today that made it feel like a business class product, but you just can't look past the seat and the general lack of comfort and the cabin overall. But yeah, these, uh, these get a big thumbs up. Three hours in getting peckish and it's time for the Corvell challenge. Ready? The bong has gone. The light is on. They're dimming the lights. Oh, what timing. It was almost like I pressed the button and this happened. Let's see how long they take to film. Thank you. Okay. It didn't take too long, as for some chocolate, you have to buy it, so um, I asked for a mocha away from this game because I love that. It took a little bit long, nothing was really happening, cabins are no excuse, but at least they came to the end. Okay, so the lights have gone out in the business cabin, so it's time for a fairly dark cool bell challenge. Let's see how quick Fly Dubai are today. <laughs> Hey, uh, can I get a glass of orange juice, please? Right. Thank you. Not the best we've ever had, but not too bad, especially considering the rest of the cabin is sleeping and there's no one really about, and definitely not as bad as others. <coughs> KLM, so yeah, that's actually not a bad score for the pool bell challenge. Okay, that is business class with Fly Dubai from Dubai to Warsaw done. And even now saying business class just doesn't really seem like a good reflection of that experience. The moment I stepped onto the plane, we saw that the yeah, aircraft had been swapped. I knew we weren't going to be in for the most luxurious time. The soft product was okay. The service was perfectly nice and the food was good, but there is no way in hell that, that is a business class seat. And you know, if you compare it to something like British Airways short haul business, okay, it holds up, but for a six hour flight, that just was not good enough. Well, here we are, first time in Poland, never been here before, lots of locked planes around, so I know where we are. That flight was not the best ever. Very hard and uncomfy seat. The food was okay, could have been more, could have been tastier. There was stuff available to buy, but it's quite expensive. Overall, the 737 MAX 8 would have been a brilliant experience. It looked a lot comfier with entertainment, better seat. Overall, just much better. But on this 737-800, not a vibe. But that is Fly Dubai on the 737-800 from Dubai to Warsaw. Done. <laughs>